morning, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I'm sorry, I had a little technical uh, issue this morning, but we should all be in. I've admitted everybody that has come into the room. Hello, hello, hello. Let's start your meeting. Before you start, I want to welcome everybody, and um, we're happy to have you as our guest. Uh, session will be recorded for later viewing, just know that. Uh, the um, opening code for this session. Okay, so this sucks. Oh, we don't have an opening code, so we can forget that. Anyway, um, at five minutes before the meeting is over, I will let you know so that you know to wrap things up. But go ahead and have your meeting and enjoy. Um, I don't see... James or Andrea on the call yet? Maybe do you? Uh, I do not. Um, but I can go ahead and uh, get us started. Uh, I see in our Slack that uh, James just got disconnected, so he's trying to get back in now. Uh, I suspect that uh, Andrea is also uh, chasing down a technical issue and uh, will be in shortly. Um, but thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, I'm Katie, I'm the technical writer here at Keystone. Uh, so I will go ahead and get us started. Uh, and once uh, Drea gets joined in, I know that uh, she will join in to present as well. There it is. Uh, so, uh, like I said, uh, I'm the technical writer here. Uh, we also have with us from Keystone or uh, trying to get into the meeting from Keystone and will be joining us shortly. Uh, Drea, who is our uh, marketing sales and communications coordinator. Uh, she's uh, always a really excellent point of contact if you need to get in touch with us for any reason. Uh, James Boats, our Executive Vice President. Uh, from customer support, we have here uh, Nancy and Marion. Uh, they are a couple of the friendly voices that you often hear when you uh, give us a call uh, needing support with uh, costs. Uh, and Kyle is here as well. He is a manager of software development. Uh, he's always hip deep in the uh, programming and the actual development uh, being done to support you guys. Uh, so he is here if any uh, technical questions come up and to see uh, what kinds of features and development uh, you guys are getting the most excited about. Uh, on our agenda today, we are going to try to keep it brief so that we have some time for a discussion with you guys. That's always a really valuable part of this meeting for us, so we want to leave some room for that. But we are going to briefly talk about some uh, training and events that we have coming up, some of the community stuff that's available for you guys. Uh, I'm going to briefly go over some of our uh, newest features and then uh, some of the stuff that we have coming up, uh, planned coming down the pipeline that should be available for you soon. Uh, 
All right, a brief look at uh, some of our current customer installations uh, is you can see over on the side of the slide, we've got quite a list of different states that are currently using class. Uh, the, oh, trying to remember now which direction it goes. I believe it's the uh, lighter green uh, states marked on the map are uh, self-hosted installations and the, nope, Marin's telling me, no, I got it backwards. So lighter green must be the Keystone hosted installations. The darker ones are self-hosted installations. Uh, so if you ever have a question about hosting or other class stuff that you would rather talk about with one of your peers than coming straight to us, uh, you can have a look at this map, find some of your neighbors, uh, and know who you might be able to reach out to. Uh, we are also happy to uh, put you guys in contact with each other as needed. So if you ever want to reach out to us to say, hey, who else in my area is using CLOSS? I want to talk to them about how they're doing this. Uh, let us know and we'll see if we can get you in touch with each other. All right. uh, some other ways to keep in touch with the CLOSS users community. Uh, the uh, CLOSSusers.com website is a website that we have stood up just for our users. Uh, it is uh, for IRC uh, users as well as the talking books and PNDB communities. Uh, we try to get up lots of good resources for you guys and there is a user forum that you are all welcome to uh, use any way you want to post questions either for us or for your fellow users or both. Uh, it's a great place to put up those, hey, does anyone else have this problem? How are you approaching this? How do you do that? Uh, kinds of questions and uh, get some feedback from your community. Uh, we also have an e-list uh, email listserv. Uh, we send out weekly wrap-up emails with all the latest content from the class users website to help you keep on top of what's going on there. Uh, that's also where we announce uh, new releases, new updates to the CLOSS program. Uh, so if you want to keep on top of when there is a new release and what's in it, uh, the e-list is a great way to do that. So if you are not currently subscribed to the listserv and want to join, uh, drop us a note in the chat here or send us an email and we'd be happy to get you signed up for that. Another great thing that we have is the Class Development Advisory Committee. Uh, this is a committee of your fellow users uh, that uh, we meet regularly with to discuss ongoing development and plan development. Uh, and they help us determine, you know, where our focus should be, how to implement certain things. Uh, there are a uh, sounding board. Uh, they provide us a lot of great feedback and direction. Uh, so if you really want to get involved in the future development of class and help steer us in the right direction, uh, let us know that you'd be interested in joining that committee. Uh, I believe it is currently uh, full for standing members, but uh, there is provision for uh, additional people to join as well um, on sort of an at-will basis. Uh, so if you're interested in doing that now, or if you just want to uh, be kept in mind in the future if a seat opens up, uh, definitely let us know uh, because that is very uh, helpful for us to make sure that we've got a well-rounded group on the uh, advisory committee. Uh, we do have a number of uh, training and other events coming up. Uh, we have been doing an ongoing series of uh, Keystone-led and user-led uh, webinars and roundtables. Uh, the next roundtable is coming up in just a couple weeks. So if there's uh, additional discussion that we run out of time for today, uh, that roundtable will be a great time to do it. Uh, there are details about that roundtable and how to join in uh, on classusers.com and it will be going out via the e-list. Uh, Last year, we held an IRC symposium uh, that got a lot of good feedback. So that was something that we would like to uh, continue on an ongoing basis. Uh, just 
providing another venue for you guys to come together, learn, talk about your experiences with each other. Uh, the Class Users Conference uh, is our large biennial, uh, every other year uh, conference uh, that we have for all of our users. And we're really excited. Uh, the one coming up for next year is going to be our first uh, conference hosted by an IRC. Uh, so we're really excited to get started on planning on that. Uh, we are bearing in mind that you know, depending on how things are looking next summer, uh, there is every possibility that we could need to take it virtual. Uh, but we are planning uh, to do it in person if possible. So uh, again, all the details are on classusers.com and that's the best place to uh, follow along and uh, learn about all of the planning that's being done for that and uh, getting announcements as they come available. Uh, the final thing is class administrator training. Uh, this is a training, uh, a very intensive, uh, you know, hands-on training uh, that we hold for uh, class administrators uh, that traditionally has been done in our office uh, over the course of a couple days. Uh, with the current state of things, uh, we've put in a lot of work to uh, both update the class uh, to a little bit you know, new format, new syllabus to, you know, take advantage of some of CLOSS's newest features uh, and converted it to be done online. Uh, so administrators training will now be done over uh, Google Meets uh, Monday through Thursday of one week with two sessions each afternoon. So it's still pretty intensive, but it's only the half days for a little bit longer. Uh, we've you know, tried to make it a really good, really, really worthwhile class. Uh, we've just held it the first time for a couple of talking books libraries uh, and we're able to get some really positive feedback from them. Uh, so we're hoping to do a session for IRC administrators. Uh, so if you would be interested in attending an administrator's training, uh, the latest blog post up on classusers.com has some additional info on that. And it has a link to a survey where you can let us know which month would be the best for uh, you to be able to attend in. Uh, we are currently looking towards scheduling this. So please, if you're at all interested, uh, pull up that survey. Uh, Marion, if you would maybe drop the link in the chat for me. Um, you know, we would really love to hear from you guys of, you know, what would be uh, the most convenient or maybe just the least inconvenient time to hold this for you to be able to attend. All right, so with all of that covered, uh, let's go ahead and launch into some of those new features. Uh, again, just for the sake of time, I am going to move through these fairly quickly, so I apologize that uh, we don't really have time to get into a lot of live demo or a lot of details. Uh, but hopefully this will help you catch up on what we've been working on for you guys for the past year. Uh, the big thing, of course, is the transition to uh, version 7.7. Uh, we've talked about this a lot, so I won't get too much into it. But uh, just as a reminder, if you are not yet up on version 7.7, if you're still running class version 7.6, uh, definitely uh, reach out to us to you know, help you get over that hurdle and clear up whatever we need to to get you on the new version. Uh, it's faster, it's more stable. Uh, you don't need a VPN, it secures everything over HTTPS encryption instead. Uh, it gets uh, automatic updates and it updates much more frequently. Uh, with 7.6 we put out uh, usually one or two large updates every year. Uh, with 7.7 uh, our update schedule is every other week. So uh, it's definitely a lot quicker update schedule. Uh, we're using the Agile methodology, if you're familiar at all with that. Uh, and with the new version, uh, it comes with an update to web order uh, to keep the two systems compatible. And as part of that update, uh, the new web order does have a new look and feel uh, and a more responsive design uh, to be able to uh, 
provide access to uh, your requesters either from their computers, their tablets, their phones, uh, whatever they're trying to use. Okay. Uh, some of the general updates and improvements. Uh, we've recently changed how you can configure the fonts in CLOS. Uh, so that covers both the font face and the size. Uh, the CLOS program is uh, fairly static. So uh, if you need to use very large fonts, uh, screen magnification is probably still the better way to go. Uh, but if you just need to make some tweaks, maybe make your font darker, uh, that is now easier to configure and it will uh, stay in place through uh, updates. Uh, it no longer has to be reset every time class updates. So if that's something that you or one of your staff members uh, need, definitely reach out to Keystone Customer Support and we'll give you uh, all of the instructions that you need to uh, get started on that and get that in place. Uh, another uh, nice new thing that we've put in uh, just generally is that we've just added the uh, email address field to the patron find. Uh, that's something that uh, we heard from KDAC was needed, was a way to pull up patron records uh, be that requester or student or whoever, uh, by the email address. So we've got that in for you guys now. Over in invoices, uh, we can now track uh, basically any check number that you come across. Uh, we've expanded that field, I think, a couple times uh, so that it can contain longer check numbers. Uh, and we have converted it so that if the check has any uh, alphabetic characters mixed in, uh, that will no longer cause any problems. Uh, also, lines from the same uh, order can now be uh, separated out onto separate invoices. So a uh, line on a material request can still only be on one invoice at a time, but if a material request has multiple lines, they can be split out between uh, different invoices. Uh, so if you need to invoice two different entities uh, for uh, different types of material, uh, that's now uh, easier to do without needing to split the material request itself. All right. Uh, on the shipping wizard screen for the material requests, uh, it now has a screen uh, to help you handle uh, electronic resources, uh, which when they're tracked in class, we refer to as eDocs. Uh, so that would be things, you know, digital files, software, uh, something like that, where it's a computer file uh, that you need to make available to the requester. So if a material request includes uh, one of these electronic resources, uh, there's a screen that comes up in the shipping wizard that will uh, help you handle those. Uh, if there are you know, no such uh, eDoc uh, requests included in that batch, uh, the shipping wizard will skip right over it so you don't have to uh, deal with the extra screen or wonder what's going on there. Uh, and just as a side note, uh, if you are not currently uh, tracking any of those electronic resources, uh, that's done using the eDoc tab in the catalog. Uh, so that's a great way to uh, keep track of where these uh, digital resources are stored, uh, all of the good metadata on that, and uh, ensuring that you have the circulation tracking for those. Okay. Uh, additionally, we've added payments and invoice tabs uh, to the material requests module. So uh, it's all information that you already had available to you, but you no longer need to go you know, back and forth in between the material requests module and acquisitions uh, and compare back and forth between those. It's been folded into uh, a reference tab there on the material request screen so that you have easy access to it. Right. On the uh, web side of things, uh, along with some of the uh, general uh, sprucing up that I mentioned earlier to get it compatible with version 7.7. Uh, we've added uh, configurable alerts. 
uh, that can be used for uh, just getting information out to uh, your requesters on the site. So those are configurable in class uh, and they show up online. Uh, and there's a lot of different uh, sort of tweaks and customizations that we can make to that. So if there's additional info that you want to make available on your uh, web order site, uh, get in touch with us and we'll help uh, point you to uh, the best alert to use for that kind of information and how to get it set up. Uh, we've also got some updated filtering uh, for the search results uh, to make it easier for your requesters to uh, zero in on the types of material that they need. Uh, one of the updates there is that uh, we brought in a feature from the web OPAC where uh, in addition to selecting a filter to say, yes, I want things that match this, uh, you can exclude the filter to say, oh, I don't, I know I don't want that. So just remove those. Uh, so for example, for the format Braille, someone can say, yes, give me all the Braille. Or they can say, no, I'm ordering for someone who's not a Braille reader. I don't care what it is, but it shouldn't be that. And you can just subtract the Braille. So it's a nice, flexible system. Uh, we think you guys and your requesters will really like it. All right. And then for upcoming development, uh, things that we are working on now or uh, looking ahead to and researching, uh, of course, very, very big one is uh, APH ordering integration. Uh, so this is something that we've been wanting to do, you've been wanting us to do. Uh, so we've finally been able to get in touch with the right people, uh, get some of those initial uh, discussions in place so that everyone is on the same page. Uh, and we're ready to uh, move forward and start really working on this. Uh, so uh, what we're looking to do here is to get it so that you can submit orders to APH online, uh, get status updates, uh, receive the invoice, uh, get shipping updates and tracking numbers, all of that good information uh, being passed back and forth between class and APH automatically. Uh, and of course, it does no good to order things automatically online if you're using uh, outdated product information and pricing. Uh, so as part of the integration, uh, we'll need to do some product integration as well to make sure that uh, you are ordering based off of uh, all of the current available information. Right. Uh, some other things that we are looking ahead to uh, is to be able to uh, email links to electronic material uh, automatically to the requester. Uh, so this is sort of the next step in uh, what I was talking about earlier with uh, having the shipping wizard uh, include information about the uh, electronic materials. This will just make it even more automatic and seamless. Uh, we're also looking at uh, continuing to improve the APH census uh, data management process. Uh, we know that's always a huge project for you guys. Uh, and uh, we currently support a couple of different workflows, either uh, generating and emailing out PDF forms or uh, having uh, the, I've lost the term, but the people who fill out the APH census, uh, having them do that through the web order interface. So we currently support uh, both of those workflows, uh, but we do want to continue to uh, make improvements uh, both on the staff side and even behind the curtain in how all of that data is stored and reported on and uh, managed in class uh, and making improvements on the web order side to make it uh, easier and easier uh, for people to report the information there. Uh, for the IRCs that choose to uh, pursue that workflow. All right, so uh, I know that was sort of a whirlwind tour of uh, both the past year uh, of Keystone and what we're looking forward to next. Uh, but right now I would like to open the floor for questions and discussion. Uh, 
like I said at the beginning, you've got a variety of Keystone staff here uh, that are uh, attending and listening in and can uh, answer any questions. Uh, you're also welcome to uh, use this time to uh, ask questions of each other uh, and your fellow class users. So I will go ahead and open up the floor. Uh, you're welcome to unmute your mics and ask or you can drop questions in the chat box and uh, go ahead and weigh in. Let us know what's on your mind. All right, and uh, since we are not getting, uh, oh, apparently uh, people can't unmute themselves. Uh, so, uh, Cindy, I'm not sure if uh, you as our host can uh, open up the floor. Uh, otherwise, people are welcome to use the chat box uh, and uh, enter their questions or comments there. I see uh, Jen Buzelich says, thank you for the email search option, the patron menu, much appreciated. Uh, thank you very much, Jen. Uh, we're glad we were able to get that implemented and released for you guys. All right, uh, Mary Jo says, I am seriously considering purchasing class for West Virginia IRC. Can, if you can give me thoughts about the product, I'd appreciate it. Uh, we here at Keystone would also appreciate it. Uh, so. Anyone who got, wants to get in touch with Mary Jo about uh, their experience with class and what they think of us, uh, please let her know in the chat box or pass along your contact information. Ah, from Kathy Caesar, when will all this roll out? Uh, well, uh, it'll roll out as we finish it. Um, the uh, upcoming development stuff I showed you uh, is mostly in the uh, fairly early stages. Uh, like I said, for APH integration, uh, right now we're at a place where uh, we've made contact with the right people and gotten everyone on the same page and gotten some buy-in from APH of, you know, yes, you know, this is something that we can support uh, and that we want you guys to do. So uh, that's really just getting started, but uh, it is definitely a priority for us. It's something we know you've been wanting for a long time and that would be really valuable for you. So uh, hopefully it's something that we can get in place and working uh, fairly soon. Uh, I don't know if Kyle wants to uh, share any thoughts on what sort of timeline he's expecting, uh, but it may be a little too early yet to say. So I've noticed I can unmute now. Um, there are a few more questions in the uh, in the chat box. Yep. Um, well, let me address the first question. This is Kyle. Um, let me address the first question. Uh, the uh, emailing of links to electronic materials uh, is something that we're going to try to be getting in place uh, sometime within sometime before the end of the year, hopefully within the next uh, month, month or month and a half. Um, that is a feature that we've had another customer ask for that we're also trying to get to upgrade to 7.7. Seven. So um, that's a, a higher priority. Uh, the next thing that will be addressed after that are the all of the census functionality. Everything that we had working in 7.6 has to also work in 7.7. .7. And so some of these little utility programs to finalize the census from the staff side screen, um, those types of things are also gonna have to be added into 7.7. .7. So census will occupy the rest of the attention of development for the end of the year. And then the integration with, uh, with orders and products uh, to the extent that APH is offered, able to offer that integration. Um, uncertain about the timeline for that because we're, we just started high level discussions with them. Uh, oh, it was in August, I believe. And 
at that time they needed to get through the September spin down period that everyone uh, is in. So uh, their attention had to be addressed mm -hmm. towards their existing ordering uh, procedures and the existing website. I was on Zoom. Oh, go ahead. All right. So um, then there was another question. Uh, there was a question about how long does it take typically for a new idea to reach implementation? Yes, uh, that was from uh, Liz Anderson. We here in Florida are also exploring our options and the possibility of using costs. How long does it typically take for a new idea to reach implementation? Well, the answer to that is it depends, <laughs> which is always the generic answer to everything. But um, it, it actually does depend on the severity of the problem and how big it is. If it's a small change to a screen uh, and there is an extremely high value in that, as in it would save you hours of work if we added this little feature in and it's a relatively small change, we are trying to address getting those things in within the next sprint or two uh, uh, of so the product. So uh, that would be two, in the a three sprint. to four weeks range. Right, right. Um, so three to four weeks. Um, if it is an extremely severe bug, we also jump right on those and try to get those fixed as quickly as possible. And then larger features that might require schema change. Um, we weigh how big it is, uh, how big of a change it's going to be. Also, we weigh how much of a problem it is for you. Is it, is it a, the lack of this feature causing you a lot of time to be spent that, you know, an automation might shorten the amount of time? And also, are there other customers that are likely going to find benefit in that feature? Um, if we can determine that there's a lot of other customers that are also going to find benefit in this, it, it also accelerates the development. Uh, on that. And a lot of times we will have um, requests come through our cloth development advisory committee, um, or we will take possible development to that committee. And there's representatives from all types of our customer base there. Um, they both give us feedback on planned updates as well as propose updates and functionality that should be added to the system. We also have our forums. We send out emails to try to get a temperature read on any major ads to the system and then prioritize those based on the input that we get from our users community. Okay. Uh, the next question I am seeing is once purchased, what is the time frame to be fully operational? Uh, I know there are a number of factors that go into that as well, uh, including what sort of um, systems that we're working with to uh, convert your data into class uh, because we do try to do uh, very thorough conversion process when people come up on class so that they aren't losing any of their historical data and records. Uh, so for a time frame, uh, Drea, chime in if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking the best thing will be uh, to get in touch with Drea, let us know uh, what sorts of systems we're working with and uh, sort of the scope of the data, uh, and we'll be able to uh, come up with some more information about a timeline. I am um, happy to send Mary Jo a sample project plan. Um, I know she's coming off of a homegrown um, system and we can, that, that will absolutely uh, impact the conversion process, but um, I believe 20 weeks, 20 to 25 weeks um, is some of the timelines that I've seen for implementation. Um, I will go back and review the latest project plans that I have, but uh, 
give me a, a drop me a line, Mary Jo, and I can see if I can come up with a sample project plan for you. All right. Um, something else that I'd like to uh, shout out right now is we talked earlier a little bit about the IRC roundtables uh, that we hold for you guys periodically. Uh, I have gotten a request from one of the people, one of the uh, class users who helps put those together that uh, everyone who's interested in the roundtables or sees a benefit from that, uh, we would appreciate it if you would um, help uh, assist with those. So either offering to host one or even just making sure to uh, show up and actively ask questions and get involved in the discussion. Uh, if you would like to take more of an active role in uh, planning or hosting uh, that kind of uh, IOC discussion, if you have requests or suggestions, anything like that, uh, you can reach out uh, directly to us at Keystone and we'll get that to the planning committee. Uh, you can reach out to uh, the planning committee directly, I believe, uh, there's information about who is involved in that on class users, uh, or you can ask us to put you in contact with them. Uh, but we would definitely uh, appreciate lots of uh, voices getting involved in those uh, IOC roundtables uh, because uh, the more people we can get involved, the higher value they're going to be. Uh, and that's something that we definitely want to continue to support and grow. And one thing that I would like to remind you is that uh, your class users group president, Jen Buzelich, uh, is based out of California. She's with the California Department of Education. Um, she's been, um, she's key in helping us plan the roundtables, uh, Cindy and California as well. Um, so if you have suggestions for roundtable topics or want to help moderate, um, you can contact either Cindy or Jen um, or drop me a line, but they are involved both with the KDAC and the users group and the program committee for us. And they are the ones that help drive content that we're presenting in Keystone webinars, in um, the users led roundtables, like the one on the 22nd of October that we'll be doing. Um, so we hope to see you there. Absolutely. All right. uh, for those who might not be keeping up with the chat box, I'll go ahead and give a shout out to a question and answer we've had over there. Uh, if several state, more states join class, does class have a plan for hiring more staff to meet those demands? Uh, James replied, yes, it is something we are making plans for. Uh, we definitely don't want to uh, get in a position where we uh, don't have enough people to support you guys. So uh, we aren't going to let that happen. Uh, we're on top of it. All right. Uh, any other uh, questions? Uh, does anyone have uh, one of those new features that particularly caught their eye that they want to hear more about or uh, take a look at a uh, demo database and uh, see anything on screen. Uh, we've got almost 15 more minutes, so uh, don't be shy. Uh, Mary Jo would like to see a demo. So um, while Katie brings up her screen, um, Kyle did want to have us uh, describe the distinction between hosted and self-hosted. So hosted systems are systems where the database is basically at our offices. When I say at our offices, I mean the database is living on a server that we control, that we do all of the updates on. We take care of all of that for you, whether it's upgrades um, to the server OS or to class itself. Um, a self-hosted system is where your IT department, you have a server at your location, class is on that server, your IT is responsible for maintaining the server, for making sure upgrades are applied to cross, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the distinction between hosted and self-hosted. And now Katie has class up, so I'll let her go ahead and go. All right. So uh, what I have 
pulled up here is the materials request module. Uh, it costs, for uh, those of you who are more prospective than current class users, uh, class is a modular system where uh, there's a number of different uh, interfaces that you can use to get to different types of information. So material requests is a big one for IRCs to be able to uh, access and track uh, requests for materials, uh, whether that's uh, equipment, uh, textbooks, uh, supplies, whatever the case may be. Uh, so I've got an example pulled up here of an uh, APH request. Uh, there's uh, the lines down at the bottom to uh, let you know specifically what was requested and uh, what the current status is. Uh, we can see uh, one of these materials is currently assigned. It's ready to go out in the mail. Uh, so when we next run the shipping wizard, uh, that will generate the uh, mailing label, the packing slip, uh, all of that good information to let your staff know uh, where to find this uh, piece of material uh, and get it out to the right person. Uh, we've also got uh, one request here uh, that uh, is not yet assigned. So uh, it's not on the shelf, it's not ready to go yet, but Klaus is keeping track of it. Uh, and when it does become available, uh, it'll know exactly who requested it. Uh, material requests also uh, ties in with acquisitions to uh, keep track of all that good money stuff. Uh, it's a little bit important. Uh, so I mentioned uh, during the presentation that we've added the uh, invoices and payments tabs to material requests to help tie all that information together. Uh, so uh, briefly looking through my uh, demo database earlier, I was not able to uh, find one that uh, had uh, invoices and payments uh, on it that I could show you, but I can at least show you the screen. Uh, so we've got invoices that would list out uh, any and all invoices that uh, include a line from this request, uh, along with you know their current status, what's been paid, what hasn't been paid. Uh, and of course, the payments tab is a list of all payments that have been made toward this material requests uh, and all of the information associated with that. And uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I know Marion has a ton of experience uh, supporting these screens and the IRCs who use them. Uh, so uh, just inviting her to chime in anytime if there's uh, something particular. Oh, uh, I think she's indicating uh, that uh, the lines are muted again. Um, there was a question from Liz in Florida asking, are APH products currently manually added to the database? And assuming that's why we're working on APH integration. And Marion did respond and say the APH materials are added to the database. We can add all of the items that are current when you start with class. So when you come up, mm -hmm. we will make sure that you have all of the current APH products in your database at that time. But yes, that is one of the reasons that we are um, working on the integration with APH is so that we can keep those up to date. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot we can do to help support you guys if you need to put them all in a, in a batch or you know do that kind of stuff. Currently, they're maintained over time manually, uh, but we are going to work on uh, getting that uh, integration in soon because uh, we know that's going to be a big value when uh, that's able to just keep up to date with the APH catalog automatically. We do have another question from Jen. She says, can current APH products be added now by Keystone? Um, no. And James did say that part of what we've discussed with APH is getting a live feed of updates to all APH products. Right now, we do not. Thank you, Cindy, for allowing me to unmute. Um, right now, we do not get updates from APH when they've updated their catalog. So we're not able to um, update your um, database and we don't have an electronic uh, catalog record 
that we can easily update your, your database with. Um, unfortunately, that's what we're talking with them about right now to try to get those items automatically updating um, as, as best we can. But, but you can, as a customer, you can add products to class. You can add products to the, a, the vendor catalog for APH. Um, as when you go in and add a purchase order for something that you've never ordered before, but APH offers it, you have the opportunity to put the catalog number from APH in. And so what happens is that Kloss captures that catalog number and the fact that you're ordering this title and creates the catalog record for you on the fly. So that the next time you order that product for a different school or district, it will use the price that you just entered in. Uh, so what we frequently heard was that uh, resource, uh, schools were ordering products, uh, requesting products before you, the resource centers were even aware that a product was offered. And so the first time they ever heard that catalog number was when somebody mailed in an order for a particular item. Uh, in addition with the web interface, if there is something they are ordering and it's not yet in your catalog, they have the ability to create a temporary record just simply to capture the title, the ISBN, the catalog number, whatever information the teacher has, we can capture it in a temporary record and then you have the chance to review that and turn it into a permanent record if you figure out that really is something that APH offers. So it's, it's not like it's a static catalog that can't change, you can add to it. It's just that moving forward, what we would like to be is in the situation where you know before the teachers even know that a product is offered and that class also knows. And Jen was, uh, she says, uh, Jen in California says they do add their own APH product. She's just wondering about the ability to bulk add um, and James says that that's our future vision and part of the integration with APH is to allow us to access that data so that we can do that and make it a whole lot easier for you to add those items to your catalog and place those orders. Uh, and I do have uh, pulled up the equipment module which is uh, one of the modules we have available for tracking materials uh, to help uh, give you an idea of uh, what sorts of information we can uh, track on those in our own catalog. Uh, so, you know, we've got part numbers, accession numbers, uh, all of that, that good kind of information. Uh, that big can... gray box at the bottom with the X is for a picture of the item. Yes. Um. So that will show up uh, on the uh, online web ordering interface uh, so that people can see and know uh, what it is that they're going to be ordering. Uh, if it's... Interrupt for a second and let you Absolutely. Know three minutes. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, if it's something where you do uh, carry some stock of it or uh, you've had a number that were ordered and are out in the field, uh, class keep track, keeps track of how many they are and what kind of status they're in. Uh, you have notes that can be avail uh, displayed to requesters using the online interface uh, and uh, categories which are uh, controlled uh, vocabulary so that can be used for filtering and that sort of thing. Uh, so there's a lot that we can uh, track here in the uh, equipment module, uh, the catalog module, which is built for monographs, uh, such as textbooks and so forth, uh, covers a lot of the same types of information, but uh, formatted and labeled uh, in a way that's more appropriate for monographs. Uh, and that does have the ability to display an image online as well. So I know that wasn't a very in-depth uh, look at uh, class, but hopefully uh, just taking a look at a couple screens uh, helped you uh, understand a little bit about uh, the range of information that we track and how we store it and work with it in class.
So any final questions for the last couple minutes here? I was just adding a reminder about the October 22nd IRC Users Roundtable that Jared Leslie from Arizona will be moderating. And also, I dropped a link to the most recent Keynote blog post where we had some IRC user relevant events that we highlighted. Um, also, don't forget we have the forums on cost users where you can ask questions, get input from other users. The Keystone staff monitors those. Um, we are always, always uh, looking forward to hearing from you there. And also, if you're not on the cost user listserv, please let Katie or I know, and we can get you added to that as well. Okay. And uh, Dre, it looks like you had a slight copy-paste malfunction on that uh, second link. Uh, I didn't so. share a second link. That's okay. Uh, that was Marion. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Marion. Uh, there we go. Uh, so uh, there's, uh, I believe, probably the, okay, that's the same one, Drea Shade. But in any <laughs> case, um, lots of information there on class users. Uh, if it's not something that you're using frequently, uh, please do take a look. Uh, and if you find that there's, uh, any more types of information or any other resources that you want us to make available there, definitely let us know because uh, we want to maintain that as a really helpful resource for you guys and just uh, giving you a uh, portal where you can access that kind of thing. So thank you everyone so much for joining us. Uh, we will let you head on to other sessions, but uh, Thank you again. We hope to see you at future IRC roundtables or uh, hear from you by email, by phone, uh, on the forums, whatever works. <laughs>